Hey folks, once again, it's Captain James Nelson here from Dude Craft Guitars. Okay, we're gonna lay out the neck and start getting it going. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna be able to glue it up right now because we got the body top right now on the clamps. So we'll see if I can find enough clamps around here. This is that uh, the Maranti that I like using. It's a it's a mahogany that grows in the Philippines. So it's very much more porous than a lot of your desert type mahoganies and uh, it's kind of, I equate it and I know guys will tell me I'm, I'm a buffoon but I equate it much to swamp ash versus northern ash. Northern ash has a drier climate therefore it's a lot denser, harder, heavier wood, great for baseball bats. A little heavy for guitars but I like to use it anyway. Uh, swamp ash people like it because it's it's in a swamp and it, so it's a very porous environment very humid and that's what this is I mean the Philippines very humid so this comes out has really good tone real good sound and you can see really good uh, grain cuts to it especially this one this one's quarter on so it's it's just a beautiful piece of wood um, and it's a lot lighter than you know if this was African mahogany I mean or Honduran mahogany it'd be crazy heavier than what this is and so that's why I like it but, you know, it's about 80 cents less a board foot, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you make a lot of guitars and you use a lot of wood, yeah, it's going to add up. And that, of course, goes to the consumer. So if I can save people money, I will. Template. This is my basic neck. This is my uh, six on top version. It's a little finger pointy thing. A lot of guys say it's very similar to a TL, but it's it's enough different. Yeah, it's got the classic appeal, but it's enough different. We can get away with it. So there you have it. That's what I use a lot for uh, for a 25 and a half inch, which this one's going to be. And so that's what we're going to use as a template. Now, a lot of times, uh, this is going to be a, a five piece laminate. So a lot of times, I want the whole piece to be, you know, headstock and everything all to be out of one cut. And so I'm going to trace the whole thing and cut it that way. This time I'm not. And the reason being is because we're not doing this, we're going to do this as a five piece. So we, we're going to have maple in the middle. We're gonna have red oak on either side of that maple. So I'm gonna cut this red oak, strip it down. The maple in the middle is almost the, the right size that we want already. Um, so I'm not gonna to have to do a lot with that or, uh, other than clean it up and make sure that it's glueable. I don't wanna take any more material off if I can because once I start shaping the guitar, that's about the bottom line that I'm gonna have. So, that's what I want with these. I mean, these are going to be on the sides. It's going to take a less boring guitar stuff, but there you have it. So what I'm looking for is I, I've got a lot of board here that I can, of course, use for a guitar body. So I don't want to cut too much of it out. Now what I want to look at is, since I'm doing a laminate, normally I'd want to go with this quarter on the way it is so that your grain's standing up. But if I'm doing it as a laminate with the maple, I'm going to have truss rod, plus I'm going to have carbon fiber in the middle or on each side of that truss rod. So I can get away with, you know, cutting it this way and saving myself a lot of wood. Of course, that part's ugly, but I can take that off. So you see what I'm saying here is I don't need, I mean, that's one and three quarter, not quite two now. So I can actually cut a piece this way, cut, cut, cut down what I need, boom and split it, split it in half, maple, oak, maple, or yeah, oak, maple, oak, boom, glue them back together, and there you have it. I have more than enough material for my neck. So with that said, what that's gonna do is it may not give me enough width for a full size of the headstock. That's fine, because I can always glue ears on like a few other acronym companies do. Something like that. So I'm going to cut a little extra and with my big ruler again. This time, I'll tell you, it just moves all over. So I'm going to cut the whole length of this puppy. It means I'm just going to set my saw fence to it. It doesn't hurt to have a line to follow. Be right back. Okay, that went pretty well. Um, in case you're wondering why I'm not showing you all the, the saw uh, stuff, because 
I, I actually I do all my sawing outside all the wood ends up being mulch from my yard which is great but not so good to film um, you know the neighbor's dog might not want to be on camera anyway but uh, that went pretty well what we did is uh, when I cut this the mahogany part I was actually able to square up some chunks a little better than I thought so in doing that I am going to still keep the the uh, vertical end grain like I said it's not going to matter most of the structures structural parts going to be uh, out of that loop anyway as you see this much wider than uh, most necks there's my template um, but it, I, it just makes it a little bit stronger so why not now what I, I do and don't have is I do have what looks like a pretty neat fit but I don't trust it and that's what I don't have I don't have trust in it so I'm going to I still see some gaps so I'm going to uh, get a little planing going on and then I'm going to sneeze all right, that's what happens when you don't wear your uh, mask while cutting. <laughs> so anyway, so as you can see, I, I, if I put some clamps on that, I can get that tight enough. But if you've got to put it under that much pressure, that big old fat gap, then you're not doing it correctly. It's better to just get it all planed out, all leveled out, and then you don't need as much clamping. And then you will make sure you won't have that dark glue line that shows up when you don't do it properly. So... Over to the planer, which isn't necessarily in the backyard so much, but it's uh, nonetheless hard to video. Yeah, it's boring to watch. So I'll be back once I get these all planed out and uh, go from there. Okay, all set, uh, got the wood done and uh, got some grub. So that gave plenty of time for the clamps to be all, all ready to go. So. Probably what I'll do to start with, let's just take off these clamps here. Nothing says high quality entertainment value video than watching a guy remove clamps off his wood projects. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Aren't you just so entertained? Yeah, gotta love it. Especially a guy with a busted thumb that can't even turn the things. That's, that's entertainment right there. Is that about that? All clamps are off. All right. So we take a look at it. Uh, make sure it all looks glued up really well. A little bit of gap there. We'll fill that one. And looks good. Okay. So tomorrow, or next time I start a video, we'll remove the screws and we'll run this thing through the planer and get it really nice and slick. Um, scuff it up with the sander real good. Well, get it slick and then scuff it up. We'll make sure the holes are patched too. This we're not worried about because that's where the neck pocket is. So we'll make sure the holes are patched and then uh, we'll get the fabric on it. So check out that video. But for now, we're going to take those clamps that we just freed up and we're going to glue this. Before we glue it, I normally like to put down some uh, wax paper. But I just checked, and the only thing left is my wife's real nice parchment paper. She'll kill me if I use it. So, I'll just do one of these because this will get a lot of squeeze out, which is fine. Hard to find replacements. Okay, so there we go. Just like that. Now, what I did also is I marked these things. Uh, these aren't really going to matter as far as which side they go on, but these do. I do have um, a preference as far as how I want it to to look. I mean, that is part of the reason that we're doing this. Of course, strength is it, but I mean, the reason we chose these woods, we want it to look good. And the other thing is I know which sides I planed. I didn't plane the back side because this side's going to be cut off anyway. Well, you're going to have very little of this left over. And same thing with the... With that maple i mean that part looks really good and remember we're not cutting any more of that off we're just going to basically sand uh, some of the patina off it but that's it so that side was pretty this side's going to be covered up by a fretboard so guess what it gets trust trust me it gets trust so there we are let's get some glue get another glue brush because you know i didn't clean the other one it's like five cents each so put that there, uh, got my clamps right behind me, probably not even close to being ready to go, but that's okay, because they hardly ever are. And this one, we're just gonna get this stuff on there. 
Real nice and neatly too, you notice. I probably could use the actual squirt top for this. Let's see if it works. These things get messed up pretty quickly. <clears throat> I know a lot of guys end up using those little dollar store ketchup and mustard bottles. Yeah, and then you got to do that thing. I told you, I'm messy when I glue. I am totally messy. I'm a slob. I see some of these guys that do this stuff. So pretty. Not me. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit on just one side. You don't need to gob both sides, both pieces of wood. I know guys do. I might just do that, swipe the brush a little bit, but that's it. Ta -da! Ta -da! Okay, now, just let that sit for a sec while we get this one. And notice I'm gluing this one. The reason why I'm not gluing that one is because this is just one unit I have to worry about. So if I glue this, I only have one thing to hold up. If I go to glue on this one and start sliding off the other one, now I've got a mess that I've got to manage. And I'm a bit of a klutz enough as it is. I don't need any more help. Now, we take this and we do one of these numbers. And now we do this one. I used to laugh at people that did multi-laminate necks. I mean, I thought, yeah, they look pretty, but what's the point? They're not any stronger, are they? Yes, they are. Um, a, like we mentioned, this tight bond can be stronger than wood many times. And B, you've got all these different grains that have to be moved by those strings, and they're just not going to get moved as easily. So, yes, they, they actually are stronger. Now, some people would uh, say that that's enough, too. They would uh, either multi-laminate or carbon fiber to help out with the truss rod you know either or is fine but I do both just because I can it's kind of cool it's fun All right. now here's a trick even though I do have that tape down and I already know that we're gonna get squeezed out all over the place and we know uh, from other videos and evidence that I am just looking at me with my food all over my shirt I am a bit of a slob but I do still believe this all comes off a lot easier later on if we take and get most of that stuff off now. So we'll just do that now. And yeah, as you can see, these things aren't really height-wise, not all even, but they're going to work. Trust me, kids. They will work. Okay. Guess what, kids? Now we clamp. What I like to do is I like to clamp both ends and then make the middle bow into itself. Now we'll put a lot of lot of pressure on it. I know some guys like to work their way down and that's fine too, but to me it's just I find it easier to do this, especially the way I'm clamping down here on the table. Because it allows me to just put everything in, lay it down flat. Sometimes I'll use bar clamps, but a lot of my bar clamps are really long. You know, they're made for when I plank the bodies together. And so it just seems like a, a whole bunch of pipes sticking around in my way when I'm trying to clamp them. Now, if I was, uh, see, I've got plenty of plenty more width than I'll ever need for a, uh, for a guitar neck. If I was doing this to size, meaning if I was putting the pieces together that just barely made enough for a guitar neck, I'd obviously want a clamping call on each side to keep from marring it up with these clamps. But I don't need to worry about that because this stuff's all going to get trimmed off. Again, there's going to be very little of that mahogany, um, a little bit more than what you see on the red oak, but not much.
And I know that will be totally evidenced later, but I mean, look at that. There, if I did a real quick sloppy trace of that, because obviously I don't quite have my center. And I'm not holding it very well. Stop. So basically that's what you would get. You get just that much, about, about double the amount that you see of the red oak. That, my friends, is how we do it. Glue is done. And let's see if we can just get one little plant in here. This one. Just because I have it. Might as well. Sitting there, looking pretty. Not getting used. Ta da! Ta -da! Now that I am going to sit overnight because it's uh, late in the evening already. Late enough, anyway. And I am done. I'm, I'm cooked. I've been, I've been doing a lot of work. Now I am done. So I'm going to go chillax. Well, after I put all my tools away, except for the clamps. And I'm done, Larry. Your, uh, your, your job's coming along, dude. Just, you know, I might take these screws out. Nah, I won't. I'll leave them in. I'll take them out tomorrow. But uh, your job's coming on, so we got the top on. Great tone. Listen to that sound. I mean, that's with screws on. So with the screws off, it's going to ring a little bit more. Uh, it may not sustain till tomorrow. You know, that type of Nigel Huffnell sustain, but it's going to have really good sound, real good tone quality. Uh, this birch ply, as, aside from the condition you see it in, like I said, I've not been very good with it, but it's going to be good to us now. Now that it's getting used, I think we just woke it up, brought it to life. <sighs> Two crooked thumbs up, and we are done for the night. Thank you. Hey folks, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Dude Craft Guitars Behind the Scenes. We hope you learned a little bit about what we do and why we like to do it. And, uh, you know, if that's the case, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you got a comment or two, go ahead and leave those, please. Share this video with friends. Hit the subscribe button. You'll know when the next one's coming out that way. Uh, we do a lot of stuff in parts and pieces so you don't have to watch a long video. I hope you appreciate that. And we appreciate you coming along. Thanks.